In this short film, we will tell you about an artifact that became our most recognizable piece of art, an iconic symbol of the museum, you might say. It is over two-story tall stained glass window titled Symbol of Poland Reborn. Commissioned for the Polish Pavilion at the 1939 New York World's Fair, it was designed by graphic artist Mieczysław Jurgielewicz and executed at the Zieliński Stained Glass Workshop in Kraków. The stained glass was on display as the main focal point of the Hall of Honor of the pavilion, greeting all visitors, just as it greets our visitors in the Great Hall today. This monumental stained glass perfectly illustrates the grandeur and success of the Polish pavilion. Measuring 28 square meters, it is one of the biggest secular stained glass windows in the US. It is also one of the reasons why Fodor's travel guide included our museum on the list of 25 most important attractions in Chicago. The artifact made it to the museum with a large number of objects that could not go back to Poland due to the outbreak of World War II. It traveled to Chicago via train in pieces and just like pieces of the puzzle had to be put back together. In the archives, there is a letter from Baron Stefan de Rop, the Polish Pavilion Commissioner General, addressed to the museum curator Mieczysław Hajman, with attached photograph of the stained glass, expecting to make it easier to assemble. The PMA also has a documentation regarding some damages sustained during transport, as well as arrangements for the repair of the glass pieces. This beautiful stained glass composition dazzles us with its vivid colors, blue, green, yellow, and red. It tells the story of Poland's accomplishments during the period between the world wars. In the center stands the figure of a woman named Polonia, the Latin word for Poland. She is a young woman since the country wanted to present itself at the fair as being young and dynamic. Another reason was that Poland had regained its independence in 1918 after 123 years of partition by Russia, Austria, and Prussia. Since the fair happened in 1939, and 1939 minus 1918 equals 21, that might be the age of this young woman. The young Polonia holds a sword and a sheaf of wheat representing the obligation of a nation to defend and provide for its people. To her left and right, one can see vignettes of Polish cities with their Latin names written on a scroll. Vilna, Krakowia, Varsovia, Poznania, and a region of Silesia or Śląsk. The port city of Gdynia, created in 1926, is presented at Polonia's feet on the right with a picture of a sailboat without a ribbon sign. Then the city of Lwów, or Leopolis, and the royal and cultural capital of Poland, Kraków. Further, in the thin blue columns, there are coats of arms or crests of various cities and regions in Poland. On the outer edge, we have 12 depictions of work and art in Poland. Since Poland at the time was an agricultural country, four of the panels show scenes from farming, planting, plowing, sowing, and reaping. But there is also a scene showing a blast furnace, a mine of some sort, blacksmithing, bricklaying, woodworking, wood carving, painting, and music stressing that Poland is not only a nation of farmers and laborers, but also of artists, musicians, and intellectuals. At the top, above the central figure, is a depiction of Our Lady of Ostra Brama, known as Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn, patroness of Vilno. This is a prominent Catholic painting of the Blessed Virgin Mary, venerated by the faithful in the chapel of the Gate of Dawn in Vilnius, Lithuania. Vilnius, or in Polish Vilno, was an important Polish city and cultural hub in the interwar period. 
The painting was historically displayed above one of the Vilnius city gates, which often contained religious artifacts intended to ward off attackers and bless passing travelers. The painting is in the Northern Renaissance style and was completed most likely around 1630. The Virgin Mary is depicted without the infant Jesus, so it is not a Madonna. The artwork soon became known as miraculous and inspired a following. To this day, the chapel of the Gate of Dawn is a major pilgrimage site in Vilnius and attracts many visitors, especially from Poland. Our Lady of Ostra Brama was chosen here over Our Lady of Częstochowa to honor the memory of Józef Piłsudski, Polish military leader, field marshal, and statesman who was born in Vilno and who had died in 1935. He led the country in the interwar period and is considered a father of the Second Polish Republic re-established in 1918. His initials, JP, are found at the bottom of the stained glass window, adorned with the Virtuti Militari cross and a marshal's baton. Just above the initials is a white crowned eagle, Poland's national symbol, and panels to the left and right honor Piłsudski's legions in World War I and the veterans of the Polish Bolshevik War of 1920. Directly in front of the stained glass in the Polish pavilion, stood a sculpture of Marshal Piłsudski created by Kazimierz Ostrowski, flanked by wrought iron decorative stands by Henryk Grunwald, holding banners with crests of Polish legions by Antoni Uniechowski. These stands and banners are parts of the Polish Museum of America collection. Kraków Stained Glass Workshop, where our stained glass was made, was established in 1902 and it exists to this day as a working studio and now also as a museum. Its founder, Stanisław Gabriel Zieleński, was brother of the famous Polish writer Tadeusz Boj Zieleński. The artists who worked with the studio included most recognized Polish artists, such as Stanisław Wyspiański, Józef Mehofer, and many others. The PMA has one more stained glass window manufactured by the Zieleński studio and exhibited at the New York World's Fair. It is a small round composition of crucifixion, 16 inches in diameter, designed by Alois Savitsky in 1938. Jurgielewicz was born in the year 1900 and died in 1983 in Warsaw, Poland. He practiced stained glass painting techniques, graphics, mainly woodcut, drawing and easel painting. He was a member of the Ritt Graphic Artists Association and was a lecturer at the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw. During World War II, in the underground, he headed the graphic department of the information and propaganda of the Home Army. During the Warsaw Uprising, together with Edmund Burke, he designed the famous poster to arms in the ranks of the Home Army. The stained glass is no doubt one of the artist's largest accomplishments. Strangely, the stained glass, maybe because it was a considered part of the design of the Polish pavilion itself, is somehow not listed in the official Polish pavilion catalog, but it is visible in the historic black and white photos of the Hall of Honor. Only three works by Jurgielewicz are listed in the catalog, in the arts print section. These are woodcuts, The Tale of Squire Twardowski IV, The Tale of Squire Twardowski V, and Wayside Figure. Both Twardowski graphics are in the collection of the PMA. Who was Master Twardowski? In Polish folklore tale, he was an alchemist and wizard living in the 16th century Kraków. He made a deal with the devil, sold his soul in exchange for special powers. He was sure that he could outsmart the devil and included special clause in their contract. It stated that the devil could take his soul only if the alchemist will visit Rome place to which Twardowski never intended to go. 
To make the long story short, one day it was the wizard who got tricked. The devil requested a meeting in tavern called Rome, but Twardowski managed to summon a magical rooster and flew off on its back. Rumor has it he escaped to the moon, where he lives to this day. The legend of Mr. Twardowski inspired a great number of poets, novelists, composers, directors and visual artists. It inspired Jurgelewicz too, but for us he will be always first and foremost creator of the stained glass window that made it into the Great Hall of the Museum. And this is how, like I mentioned earlier, the symbol of Poland Reborn became a symbol of the Polish Museum of America, which is here to serve you. And now we invite you for an in-person visit so you can admire it in its full glory.